The AANA is pleased to present the Wellness and Chemical Dependency in the Nurse Anesthesia Profession curriculum to increase awareness and knowledge of the need for each of you to be healthy and well. Many of you are viewing this curriculum as nurse anesthesia students. We're excited to have you begin this fulfilling profession. We believe it is imperative that you learn about occupational risk for addiction at this early stage of your anesthesia education. Equally important is for you to discover the need to adopt and employ healthy lifestyle behaviors throughout your professional tenure. Some of you are further into your careers and may personally know colleagues who have suffered the consequences of turning to unhealthy habits, such as drugs or alcohol, to cope with personal or professional stress. Whatever your career stage, professional lifestyles that promote effective coping, adaptation, and resilience can be taught, learned, and adopted. These modules provide a number of simple but essential elements to forge a long and healthy career. The overarching goal is to create a healthier workforce and, as a consequence, to optimize patient safety. The curriculum is presented in six modules. Each can be viewed independently by the learner at any time. Module 1 and 2 introduces general concepts and the dimensions of wellness, the threat of stress, and the need for resilience. Module 2 explores specific stress research data from the CRNA and student nurse anesthetist populations. Module 3 expands on these concepts, addressing specific healthcare stressors and introduces the risks for chemical dependency and addiction. Module 4 imparts a broad overview of the disease of addiction, along with the signs and behaviors to recognize an impaired colleague. It also presents an introduction to understanding of mental health conditions, such as burnout and depression, and the impact of these on overall well-being. Module 5 speaks further to the consequences of the disease of addiction, introduces treatment and recovery, explores the challenge of potential reentry to the profession, as well as relapse.
Module 6 highlights the concepts from the first five modules and offers resources for creating and sustaining a personal wellness plan. We hope that this curriculum introduces each of you to the concept of building your personal wellness arsenal of coping skills and resiliency strategies. The learning will facilitate the development of a healthy approach to stress reduction throughout your life. Finally, it will focus on the elements of sustaining healthy relationships, diet, exercise, and carving out adequate time for recreation as well as sleep and restoration. With knowledge as power, we envision that the increased awareness brought about by engaging with this module series will help reduce the incidence of substance abuse by CRNAs and student nurse anesthetists. It is further hoped that this knowledge may also prevent the threat of untimely death related to substance abuse in the anesthesia provider population. An impaired provider poses great threat, not only to themselves, but also to the patients in their care. We encourage nurse anesthesia educational programs to advance wellness and chemical dependency education during the student orientation and inculcate these principles throughout the program. The AANA thanks the Curriculum Task Force volunteers who contribute to the content of these modules. The AANA is pleased to present the Wellness and Chemical Dependency in the Nurse Anesthesia Profession Curriculum to increase awareness and knowledge of the need for each of you to be healthy and well. Many of you are viewing this curriculum as nurse anesthesia students. We're excited to have you begin this fulfilling profession. We believe it is imperative that you learn about occupational risk for addiction at this early stage of your anesthesia education. Equally important is for you to discover the need to adopt and employ healthy lifestyle behaviors throughout your professional tenure. Some of you are further into your careers and may personally know colleagues who have suffered the consequences of turning to unhealthy habits, such as drugs or alcohol, to cope with personal or professional stress. Whatever your career stage, professional lifestyles that promote effective coping, adaptation, and resilience can be taught, learned, and adopted. These modules provide a number of simple but essential elements to forge a long and healthy career. The overarching goal is to create a healthier workforce and, as a consequence, to optimize patient safety. The curriculum is presented in six modules. Each can be viewed independently by the learner at any time. Module 1 and 2 introduces general concepts and the dimensions of wellness, the threat of stress, and the need for resilience. Module 2 explores specific stress research data from the CRNA and student nurse anesthetist populations. Module 3 expands on these concepts, addressing specific healthcare stressors and introduces the risks for chemical dependency and addiction. Module 4 imparts a broad overview of the disease of addiction, along with the signs and behaviors to recognize an impaired colleague. It also presents an introduction to understanding of mental health conditions, such as burnout and depression, and the impact of these on overall well-being. Module 5 speaks further to the consequences of the disease of addiction, introduces treatment and recovery, explores the challenge of potential reentry to the profession as well as relapse. Module 6 highlights the concepts from the first five modules and offers resources for creating and sustaining a personal wellness plan. We hope that this curriculum introduces each of you to the concept of building your personal wellness arsenal of coping skills and resiliency strategies. The learning will facilitate the development of a healthy approach to stress reduction throughout your life. Finally, it will focus on the elements of sustaining healthy relationships, diet, exercise, and carving out adequate time for recreation as well as sleep and restoration. With knowledge as power, we envision that the increased awareness brought about by engaging with this module series will help reduce the incidence of substance abuse by CRNAs and student nurse anesthetists. It is further hoped that this knowledge may also prevent the threat of untimely death related to substance abuse in the anesthesia provider population. An impaired provider poses great threat, not only to themselves, but also to the patients in their care. We encourage nurse anesthesia educational programs to advance wellness and chemical dependency education during the student orientation and inculcate these principles throughout the program.
The goal is to strengthen knowledge and coping skills and proactively seek balance to avoid professional and personal vulnerabilities. The AANA thanks the Curriculum Task Force volunteers who contribute to the content of these modules. The purpose of this module is to introduce anesthesia professionals to the inherent stress encountered in the workplace, unique vulnerabilities of the anesthesia profession, and to explore strategies for staying well under these conditions. It also includes a brief historical sequence of events that lead to an increased awareness related to the risk of chemical dependency in anesthesia professionals and what the nurse anesthesia community has done to address this important issue. The first four objectives of this module discuss workplace, school, and personal stressors that threaten provider wellness. The relationship between perceived occupational stress and professional satisfaction is also examined. The sources and levels of stress of different anesthesia provider roles are examined. Each role has different sources and levels of stress that need to be recognized in order to effectively cope with those unique stressors. Methods and strategies for reducing stress and developing good coping strategies that can help lead to healthcare provider satisfaction will also be explored. The remaining four objectives will continue to discuss how stress, burnout, and exhaustion, often inherent in the anesthesia profession, can contribute to maladaptive coping behaviors, including substance misuse, a brief history of substance misuse in the anesthesia profession, and factors that contribute to an increased vulnerability of emotional illness, suicide, and chemical dependency in the anesthesia professional. The stress of the anesthesia profession is often compared to the airline and other safety intensive industries when it comes to inherent stress. The high level of responsibility, especially during takeoff and landing of both an airplane and an anesthetic, have been well documented. Many professionals have stressful jobs. What makes anesthesia unique are the many contributing factors that can turn the inherent stress of the profession into issues that are potentially detrimental to both the anesthesia provider and their patients. Workplace environment, personality, and personal resilience all play a role in this equation. The stress varies by individual as well as the role in which they are serving. The amount of stress experienced will influence the individual's sense of well-being as well as their professional satisfaction. Although it is impossible to change the stress that comes with the anesthesia profession, it is possible to identify factors that contribute to workplace or school stress, improve our knowledge on how to cope with the stress, and to avoid maladaptive behaviors through education about wellness and stress management. There are many factors in our daily lives, both personally and professionally, which can add stress and affect our overall wellness. Stress can occur not only in your personal life, but also in school or on the job. Every profession, including being a student, has its own unique set of stressors. It is important to examine job factors that contribute to workplace stress so that you can work to minimize the impact they have on you and to find effective ways to cope with those stressors that you cannot change. Job demands produce stressors that are sometimes uncontrollable. Today's reality is working long hours, having fast-paced turnover, and increasing financial pressures. There can also be factors such as harassment, conflict, unclear roles, politics, or discrimination that add to stress in the workplace. Making adjustments in your personal life to reduce stress should be considered to cope with increasing occupational demands. Personality also plays a contributing role in how you manage workplace or school stress. The ability to recognize personal factors that might add to your stress may help avert further problematic issues. Knowing the limitations of your ability and skill set and gaining necessary skills reduces undue stress in highly technical environments. Lacking material resources such as financial security or psychological resources such as effective coping skills can also increase stress levels. Climbing the ladder of success produces stress when trying to achieve personal goals and likewise may cause further stress 
when personal goals are not met. Set reasonable expectations and life goals. Do not hesitate to seek professional counseling to help find potential solutions. In addition, we all face multiple internal and external pressures that threaten wellness. Practicing nurse anesthetists often compartmentalize some of their personal emotions and issues from their daily professional practice, which could affect patient care. The ability to compartmentalize these emotions leads many times to ignoring personal facets of their lives. Sorting out personal issues and reflecting on them periodically or raising or lowering personal expectations helps individuals arrive at suitable decisions making for healthy lifestyle choices. Practice pressures related to your job can also impact your personal wellness. Anesthesia is a stressful and demanding job requiring a level of vigilance that can never lapse to ensure patient safety. The constant demands of the practice of anesthesia come from many facets. Each of these facets are time sensitive and demand a rapid informed decision for resolution to prevent catastrophic events. Some of the demands facing the anesthesia provider include those listed. Patient safety is foremost in the mind of an anesthesia provider during the perioperative period, and a litigious society creates high expectations for the nurse anesthetist. Nurse anesthetists are expected to perform at a very high level without error. With today's rapid communication, many providers become overloaded with information. Nurse anesthetists are expected to perform all of these tasks and decisions in a short period of time. Lastly, case turnover demands put extra stress on the nurse anesthetist. Can you think of others that might be included in the list? Prolonged stress, whether job-related or personal, can manifest through physical, emotional, and cognitive signs and symptoms, and eventually through behavior. Both workplace and personal stress can lead to a number of physical ailments by reducing the immune system, thereby allowing more frequent infections to occur. Mouth and other ulcerations, as well as skin irritations and rashes, can be stress-related. Asthma is worsened by stressful situations, as are existent cardiac problems. Weight loss and gain Headaches and tiredness have all been linked to unmanaged stress. Pain is associated with stress and is many times the issue most attributed to the use of substances for its relief. Signs of workplace stress can also present in the form of emotional signs that lead to a variety of feelings, from anxious and angry to frustrated and bored. Over extended periods of time, constant unmanaged stress and wide fluctuations in emotions leads to depression and or exhaustion. Other symptoms can include apathy, passiveness, irritability, and a feeling of emptiness. Prolonged workplace stress is revealed through cognitive signs that begin to affect the ability to perform, such as poor concentration, memory, organization, and decision making. The stressed individual may also be less creative at problem solving and hypersensitive to criticism. The physical, emotional, and cognitive signs of stress eventually also begin to manifest with behavioral signs. Stress depletes coping resources. Depleted resources must be managed or they begin to show up in behavior that affects both provider and patient safety. Workplace injury and errors are sometimes the result of workplace stress. Difficulty in sleeping and fatigue increase, which leads to using alcohol, drugs, or chemicals to obtain the needed rest and relaxation. Once drugs become habitual and are used to relax at night, opposing drugs are used to elevate the mood or wake up for the day's activities. This can lead to problematic social behavior, such as withdrawal, aggression, and possible addiction. With more anger, frustration, depression, and anxiety, drug use becomes more of a response to control the emotions related to stress, 
only to jeopardize the professional's health and patient safety. If acute stress continues to be unmanaged, it can progress to become chronic stress. Chronic stress is insidious and ultimately more devastating than acute stress. This type of stress does not let up. Our bodies are continually bathed in stress hormones. Work-related stressors, such as workload, job conditions, role conflict and ambiguity, career development, interpersonal relations, workplace aggression, and conflict between work and life roles are influenced by the individual's perceptions, past experiences, social support, and individual differences to impact the level of stress experienced. In the preoccupation of dealing with the unmanaged or chronic stress, it becomes difficult to concentrate and remember critical events. The ability to quickly develop a reasonable solution to problems is progressively affected, and when either constructive or critical criticism is given regarding a poor decision, the response results in an overreaction. The ability to recognize that one is making poor decisions is not easy and leads to greater difficulty with coping. The outcomes of poor stress management during the delivery of an anesthetic can range from something small to catastrophic. The delivery of the wrong drug or the improper dose, not watching the clinical reaction of patients or the monitors can lead to poor patient outcomes. With an increase in stress, people suffer more physical, emotional, cognitive, and behavioral problems, leading to a reduction in work time. Some employees find other activities while at work to reduce their stress. Others develop poor morale, which leads to greater job dissatisfaction and turnover. Poor stress management can lead to fatigue, which can also increase workplace mishaps. Fatigue is an inherent part of life as an anesthesia provider and can have grave consequences if not managed properly. Getting enough sleep is often one of the most difficult goals for the anesthesia professional to achieve. Early mornings, late nights, and long hours on call all contribute to interrupted normal sleep patterns. Sleep deprivation has been shown to mimic acute alcohol intoxication and can lead to poor decision making, careless performance, and slowed reaction times that jeopardize personal as well as patient safety. Sleep deprivation is a relative concept. Small amounts of sleep loss have subtle cognitive costs which appear to go unrecognized by the individual experiencing the sleep loss. More severe restriction of sleep, for example over a week, leads to profound cognitive deficits similar to those seen in some stroke patients. These symptoms also appear to go unrecognized by the individual. The lack of recognition of the effects of sleep deprivation equals a setup for all kinds of errors to occur. The reality is humans can make mistakes. Sleep deprived individuals are more likely to make more mistakes. With decreased sleep, higher order cognitive tasks essential for performing a safe anesthetic are affected early and disproportionately. Dr. Suzanne Stevens reports that total sleep duration of seven hours per night over one week can result in decreased speed and tasks of both simple reaction time and in more demanding computer-generated mathematical problem solving. It also decreases one's ability to have simultaneous focus on several tasks, which is critical in anesthesia. Reduce this to total sleep duration of five hours per night over one week, and findings showed both decrease in speed and the beginning of accuracy failure, as well as increasingly risky behaviors in tasks requiring judgment. The high cost of an action is seemingly ignored in the sleep-deprived individual. Stevens also summarizes that driving simulations found accidents increase progressively as total sleep duration is decreased to seven, five, and three hours per night over one week. Fatigue can also present in the form of compassion fatigue. Stressors come in many forms, and as healthcare professionals, in an environment that often deals with the emergent nature of medicine, we can be pulled into the patient's plight as caregivers, or even, in the case of Hurricane Katrina or 9-11, be so overwhelmed by the constant images and inability to help that we become totally exhausted emotionally. Often we find ourselves pushing through the fatigue so that we can be there for our family members who are counting on us to drive them to school or cook dinner.
We have the same go-getter attitude when it comes to our jobs. The combination of the anesthesia occupation and the personalities drawn to it are often a setup for increased stress levels. The CRNA personality has some admirable qualities that drive us to succeed, but also some qualities that add to the often self-inflicted stress level. As nurses, we are engaged, empathetic, and attached to our patients. As nurse anesthetists, our overachiever personality drives us to excel, to be in control not only in the classroom, but also in the OR and in our personal lives. Over time, our fast-paced cases may eventually give way to automatic pilot and boredom. Our focused lives become complicated with children, mortgages, aging parents, and frustrations with coworkers and administration. The lack of time to develop priorities becomes even more problematic. The feeling of never getting anything accomplished and not being able to relax during periods in which you are away from your work becomes overwhelming and exhausting. When there is no me time, balance is upset. When catastrophic events such as cancer, divorce, litigation, and bankruptcy occur, it is no longer possible to be everything to everybody. As the stressful routine becomes the norm, Burnout becomes a likely consequence. Stress depletes coping resources and results in a feeling of lack of control. One of the unfortunate consequences of chronic personal and professional stress is burnout. Burnout is a state of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion caused by long-term exposure to demanding work situations or the cumulative result of stress. Cords and Doherty, in their 1993 study of employees within healthcare, found that workers who have frequent intense or emotionally charged interactions with others are more susceptible to burnout. You may be more prone to burnout if you identify so strongly with work that you lack a reasonable balance between work and your personal life. If you try to be everything to everyone, or if your job is monotonous. A 2007 Erickson study showed RNs who attempted to cover up feelings of fatigue, anger, depression, had increased incidence of burnout. Burnout can present in a variety of ways. Substance abuse can be a symptom of burnout, as can a change in affect, like feeling sad or depressed. Feeling tired, even with adequate sleep, compulsive sleeping, or insomnia can also be symptoms of burnout. Work dissatisfaction and boredom decrease idealism and work motivation. Forgetfulness, decreased concentration, and impaired cognitive functioning can result in subpar job performance and low morale. Burnout can also manifest in an increased incidence of physical signs, symptoms, and illnesses. Various anesthesia roles have some similar and many different stressors. It is difficult to change the stress that comes with each role, but is possible to minimize the impact and improve the knowledge and tools that students, educators, managers, and clinicians have to cope with stress and also to hone their ability to recognize and control their personal risk factors. Regardless of the role, factors like fatigue, long irregular hours, juggling family life with a career, life and death decision making, and other demands in the work setting can all contribute to increased stress. A majority of the clinician stress comes from the day-to-day -day pressure and demands for constant vigilance, the effects of fatigue, production pressure, and never being able to be off. Managers have the additional responsibility of mounds of paperwork and policy rewrites, the stressors of budget constraints, staff shortages, and balancing management with clinical responsibilities. Although anesthesia professionals in all roles experience occupational stress, a recent survey by Chippis and McKenna in 2011 found that student nurse anesthetists and nurse anesthesia faculty experienced the highest self-reported stress levels of any other group. In addition, a recent survey by the American Association of Nurse Anesthetist Peer Assistance Advisors in 2010 revealed that 17% of nurse anesthesia program directors reported they had a student or faculty member die within the past five years due to chemical dependency or wellness issues. 
Student nurse anesthetists are under tremendous pressure throughout their training and may not have the knowledge about the risk of chemical dependency or the appropriate skills necessary to manage their stress levels. In the classroom, students are bombarded with lectures and skill challenges. They have the emotional experience of no longer being the expert in the nursing unit, but a novice in a new environment. In the clinical setting, actions that we take or those that result from the actions others take can cause changes in our patient that ultimately lead to increased stress in ourselves. External stressors are common to all nurse anesthesia students. Daily life with its financial and social concerns does not go away. Teaching healthy adaptation and coping strategies to students early contributes to well-balanced graduates who can effectively manage stress and therefore enhance patient safety. With improved coping skills and the knowledge of occupational vulnerabilities, they will be better prepared to understand the risks and avoid the pitfalls that may lead to serious consequences such as addiction. Faculty members, by default of teaching this content to their students, will also become more knowledgeable and not only be better able to assist their students, but also to identify the risks in themselves and their faculty colleagues. Occupational stress, regardless of role or profession, decreases job satisfaction, increases turnover rate, and reduces quality. At different workplaces, nurses are confronted with different work tasks working conditions, and hence different sources of stress. Managing occupational stress is important not only from a personal wellness perspective, but also because it is directly related to professional satisfaction in the workplace. Anesthetists are exposed to stress. Having the life of the patient in their hands and having to operate under different critical conditions in scheduled and emergency situations. The effects of stress can be mitigated by having high control, high satisfaction, and high empowerment. In a study by Nyson et al. on occupational stress and burnout in anesthesia, anesthetists felt a lack of control, mainly over time management, such as overtime, difficulty taking a break, and planning non-clinical tasks such as lectures and scientific research. Work planning, such as difficulty in getting the work schedule in advance, frequent changes during the day, and risks. There was a significant difference in these control dimensions and in the resource dimension between the anesthetist and the other workers. Anesthetists also felt more confident about their future than did other workers. Anesthetists reported high levels of job satisfaction, job challenge, work commitment, and empowerment. Despite the overall high level of job satisfaction for nurse anesthetists, the anesthesia workplace presents significant barriers that can contribute to a lack of health and wellness. The cultural expectation of perfection and control combined with production and time pressures can be like a pot that is ready to boil over. The cultural belief that most anything can be cured with pharmacological intervention adds fuel to an already hot fire. The politics of medicine has the potential to increase antagonistic relationships. We are always in a hurry to get one more case done, to start the next case, to do everything right. The clash between lack of resources and demands of productivity and patient needs increases our physical and emotional stress and creates an atmosphere which depletes personal reserves and increases physical and emotional stress. But there are important steps we can take to reduce our personal and professional stress levels. There are many strategies for reducing stress that can hopefully help you avoid chronic stress and burnout. Some of these strategies seem simple, but really work. For example, making time for fun and relaxation and adopting a healthy lifestyle. Finding adaptive coping skills that work for you is an essential part of managing your stress and staying well. Different strategies work for different people. Coping effectively with adversity often requires a balance between changing the negative conditions, either through confrontation or avoidance, and adjusting to those things that are beyond anyone's power to change. While the next slide is by no means an exhaustive list, it may give you some other adaptive coping strategies that you can try. Adaptive behavior is used to adjust to another type of behavior or situation. 
Adaptive coping strategies are characterized by a kind of behavior that allows an individual to change an unconstructive or disruptive behavior to something more constructive. There is growing evidence that concentrating on wellness issues such as improved diet, exercise, getting enough sleep, meditation, and strengthening support systems can improve coping mechanisms and increase general well-being. Other things like attitude changes, setting proper boundaries, and communicating appropriately with others are also important. Larson and Sanner describe what the individual anesthetist can do to improve well-being at work and emphasize that although stress remains an inevitable aspect of anesthesia, adaptive coping and reframing the way the provider looks at an event can make a huge difference. They emphasize that student anesthetists would especially benefit from these adaptive coping strategies. Effective coping skills are especially important to the student nurse anesthetist to help enable them to control excessive unmanaged stress as it can be counterproductive to learning and affect success. Being well includes the utilization of a plan that brings balance to your life. Personal beliefs and attitudes will help you adjust to the stressors you experience. By evaluating and examining the stress in your life, you can categorize and realign your response to stressors. Including family and friends in your life helps you reduce stress and provide you with a resource to find other solutions. Appreciate all of the people you know and the things you have. Constant practice is necessary to stay abreast of a busy schedule and for making continuous changes in life. A number of checklists for work-life imbalance have been developed. A sample checklist written by Harvey Gregg is included in the resource tab for this module. Although the hope is that everyone can develop adaptive coping mechanisms and achieve balance in their lives, this is not always the case, and many turn to maladaptive behaviors to cope. Unmanaged stress can often lead to maladaptive coping mechanisms such as anger, alcohol abuse, substance misuse, and violence. Maladaptive behavior is often used to reduce anxiety, but the result is dysfunctional and nonproductive. For example, avoiding situations because you have unrealistic fears may initially reduce your anxiety, but it is nonproductive in alleviating the actual problem in the long term. The ability to recognize these maladaptive behaviors in yourself or fellow healthcare professionals is fundamental to seeking healthier alternative solutions. Using these types of ineffective coping mechanisms to deal with stress can put the anesthesia provider at both personal and professional risk, including potentially harming a patient, a loved one, or yourself. Anger is often a symptom of stress and a maladaptive coping behavior. Hanging on to anger, road rage, and lashing out at colleagues or patients are examples of this ineffective coping skill. Not only can this behavior endanger you or others, it can also get you fired. Alcohol and substance misuse are very common maladaptive behaviors. How often have you heard someone say after a stressful day, I need a drink or a smoke. Substance abuse has been described as one of the top three health problems in the United States. Internationally, things are not much better. According to the World Health Organization in 2011, at least 15.3 million people worldwide have drug use disorders. Alcohol and illicit drug use account for 5.4% of the world's annual disease burden and one in five people who use an illicit drug might meet criteria for dependence at some point in their lives. Most of the literature agrees that although stress does not cause chemical dependence, it can increase the risk. Multiple studies have shown that stress can lead to drug misuse in vulnerable individuals and increase drug craving and relapse for the drug seeker. It is therefore important to avoid these maladaptive coping mechanisms to deal with your stress because chances are it will just make things worse. Substance abuse within the anesthesia community is not a new phenomenon. Historically it has plagued anesthesia professionals, both nurses and physicians, from the earliest days of the profession. 
Horace Wells is probably one of the earliest documented and well-known examples of the consequences of misuse of anesthesia drugs. As early as 1894, it was noted that physicians were more likely than the general population to become addicted to pain-relieving drugs, and that nurses were often identified as abusers of alcohol. For example, Although anesthesiologists represent only about 3.5% of physicians, they are disproportionately represented when it comes to physicians admitted for treatment of chemical dependency. Other historical highlights are noted here, such as in 1962. Notice the 20-year gap between modern recognition of the problem in 1962 and the beginning of important steps such as the birth of the AANA Peer Assistance Committee in 1983. For the AANA, recognition began at a 1983 business meeting. Diana Morgan, a Minnesota president interested in trying to help fellow colleagues, proposed the resolution that AANA study the impact of chemical dependency in the profession. The reason for Diana's resolution remains unknown, but one can speculate that an incident may have triggered her interest. This story is told in the 2009 AANA Journal article, Peer Assistance Reaches Its 25th Year, by Diana Quinlan. The article includes a quote by Michael Booth, in support of the resolution that we've got to do something about this, reporting that 10 to 12 percent of members were affected. Following this resolution, the AANA formed the Ad Hoc Peer Assistance Committee, chaired by Ruth Long, to support chemically dependent colleagues leading other professional health care organizations in recognizing addiction and wellness. Over the last 28 years, the AANA's efforts have grown to now include health promotion with the Health and Wellness Program to partner with Peer Assistance Committee's work for education of the occupational risk and the positive message for prevention. Peer Assistance provides advocacy and advice to the association members and the public on issues regarding practitioner well-being as it pertains to nurse anesthetists and students' risk for drug use, abuse, dependency, and addiction. Despite the anecdotal recognition of the occasional physician or nurse becoming addicted to therapeutic drugs, an appreciation of the nearly epidemic nature of substance abuse and addiction within the anesthesia community is a relatively recent development. With the catalyst in 1983 to better recognize and address the problem, more accurate records were kept regarding the incidence of chemical dependency. In 1984, AANA adopted language to officially acknowledge the responsibility of the profession to educate providers of the risks of chemical dependency. The professions are also becoming aware of the relationship between stress, ineffective coping mechanisms, burnout, and depression, and how these issues influence the incidence of substance abuse, accidental overdose and death, and suicide. Historical reports suggested that opioids were a highly favored choice for misuse, in part because of their common use and widespread availability, but also because of their ability to cause euphoria and relieve physical pain and emotional stress. Abuse of inhalation agents and other sedative agents were reported as well. In the late 1980s, propofol was introduced to clinical practice as an induction agent. Because of its ability to produce euphoria, a sense of well-being, and a well-rested state, it has become a common drug of choice among anesthesia professionals. Unfortunately, propofol has a very narrow therapeutic index, making it a difficult drug for users to titrate. Overdoses and deaths from propofol are becoming more common as its abuse becomes more widespread. As early as 1992, propofol diversion misuse was reported. While historical studies have shown little relationship between the degree of accounting for drug use, limitation of access to specific agents, and their misuse by anesthetists and anesthesiologists, the FDA has recently made propofol a scheduled drug. 
While there may be intuitive appeal to the idea that nurses and other health care providers take good care of themselves and are relatively immune to substance abuse and chemical dependency, this is far from the truth. In fact, nurses and physicians as a group are more prone to drug addiction than is the general public. At any given moment, as many as 10% of RNs may have a drug or alcohol problem, and critical care and emergency room nurses are especially vulnerable to the stresses that lead to drug and alcohol abuse. Nurses who are attracted to work in these high acuity areas may have personality traits that leave them susceptible to chemical dependency. In 1999, CRNA Donald Bell et al. sent an anonymous survey to CRNAs that revealed a 9.8% of respondents admitting to misuse of controlled drugs. His data also demonstrated preference of drug misuse in descending order, number one benzodiazepines, followed by number two nitrous oxide and inhalants. The number three choice was opioids, fourth was propofol, and fifth, the disassociative drugs. Studies have confirmed that not only are anesthesia students prone to pre-addictive or excitement-seeking behavior and increased substance abuse rates, but that intensive care unit, post-anesthesia care unit, operating room, and emergency room nurses are as well. It is therefore an alarming irony that this is the very cohort from which nurse anesthesia educational programs draw their applicant pool. Even though AANA peer assistance had been in place since 1983, it took the death of past AANA president Jan Stewart in November of 2002 to really jolt the nurse anesthesia community into doing more. The shock of the death of this vibrant, high-performing individual from an accidental overdose led to the beginning of a new awareness surrounding chemical dependency and the need for professional wellness. Jan's daughter, Sarah Stewart Gomez, courageously disclosed her mother's disease and cause of death as an accidental, self-administered overdose of sufentanil. She also volunteered to tell her story, stating that, if this could happen to my mom, this could happen to anyone. My mother would say, we must grant each other permission to save each other. The death of Jan Stewart served as a call to reality for all nurse anesthetists. The AANA Board of Directors made the decision to take a proactive and aggressive position in rooting out the disease of addiction in the profession and finding a path to wellness for CRNAs. The Wellness Initiative to identify risk factors and antecedents of chemical dependency among anesthesia professionals had begun. In 2004, the Jan Stewart Memorial Lecture Series was established. The AANA launched a wellness blue ribbon panel that resulted in the establishment of the wellness program. As a follow-up to the 1999 study, in 2007, Bell's new research found that the number of CRNAs admitting to drug misuse inside the operating room had changed very little since 1999, but also that 23% admitted drug misuse outside of the operating room, and 15% stated that they were aware of a CRNA colleague who was currently misusing drugs. Although predisposition, availability, and culture are important elements of the picture, stress is the necessary trigger that unleashes the disease. Nurse anesthesia students almost universally have worked in high stress areas prior to even starting school. Therefore, in order to avoid such destructive and deceptive behaviors, it's important to recognize the factors that make you vulnerable to stress in the first place. The literature supports the stressful nature of the anesthesia profession and the many factors that can lead to an increased vulnerability for substance misuse or abuse, including easy access to potent medications and extensive knowledge about their effects. Furthermore, high performance demands, long hours, and curiosity can lead the anesthesia provider to experiment with these medications to ease stress. The self-admitted substance misuse among nurse anesthetists is high. 
Although stress does not cause substance abuse, it can contribute to vulnerable populations being more susceptible to the risk of chemical dependency. Being able to recognize sources of school and workplace stress and potential vulnerabilities, as well as personal stress symptoms, are the first steps towards being able to deal with this stress in a healthy way. Some of the vulnerabilities to substance abuse for anesthesia professionals are listed here. These vulnerabilities were well documented in studies by Luck and Hedrick and Tetzloff et al. Most anesthetists are high achievers, with 67% of student anesthetists in the upper third of the class. These high charging individuals are vulnerable to the unique stressors of the anesthesia career. Anesthesia is a high stakes and stressful occupation with requirements to be ever vigilant even when sleep deprived. Studies have consistently shown that nurse anesthesia students have traits for assertiveness lower than non-abusers and addictive tendency scores similar to addicted individuals in the general population. Also, nurses who abuse drugs are likely to be high academic performers, have an advanced degree, and are often held in high esteem by colleagues. Unavoidable occupation circumstances, along with the well-documented excitement-seeking, high-achievement personality of a majority of anesthetists, contributes to the vulnerabilities of chemical dependency. In addition to the increased vulnerability to substance misuse inherent in the anesthesia career, the presentation of chemical dependency is different for anesthesia professionals. Most notably, dependence often occurs rapidly in anesthesia professionals as compared to the slower emergence of addiction in the general lay community. Consequences of the environment and medications used often result in death of the anesthesia provider without intervention. Wearing masks is a series of videos depicting the dangers of chemical dependency from the perspective of actual providers and families who have endured its consequences. Dr. Richard Sims, an anesthesiology resident in 1991, died due to accidental overdose of sufentanil and was the impetus for the original wearing masks video. His wife disclosed his curiosity about the relaxation he saw in his patients' faces when he put them to sleep. Dr. Sims also misused and had a problem with alcohol. The first wearing masks video was produced by the American Society of Anesthesiologists by Dirk Wales. Dr. John H. Lecky, the medical consultant on the video, was himself using fentanyl while chair of the ASA Committee on the Health of Operating Room Personnel, proving the point that denial is a mainstay of addictive disease. Subsequent wearing masks videos were produced by the AANA and are available on the AANA website to download and view. The resources with this educational module include an article on the history of AANA peer assistance and list early pioneers who worked to support research, education, and acceptance for the recovering CRNA. Today, this work continues through CRNA and SRNA volunteers on the AANA Peer Assistance and Health and Wellness Committees and the State Peer Advisors. The wellness movement has also reached further with health promotion and addiction prevention within state associations, nurse anesthesia programs, and individual workplaces. Growth is also seen in the number of students who have taken the opportunity to continue research of the topic of chemical dependency, addiction, and wellness. The current AANA Health and Wellness Program, formerly known as the Wellness Program, was officially launched in February 2004, less than two years after the death of AANA past president Jan Stewart. Its intention is to help the CRNA and SRNA to identify and cope with occupational stressors such as those listed here. Resources and information can be found online at the website, aanawellness.com. Change theorist Kurt Lewin states, an issue is held in balance by the interaction of two opposing sets of forces, those seeking to promote change, the driving forces, and those attempting to maintain the status quo, restraining forces. This theory can be easily applied to the AANA's goal of promoting the well professional. 
By optimizing the positive driving forces and minimizing the restraining obstacles to change, we can continue on the path to professional and personal wellness. Occupational stress, burnout, and fatigue are risks to the anesthesia profession. The ability to develop effective and avoid maladaptive coping strategies increases professional satisfaction and personal wellness. Ineffective coping and unrecognized risk can lead to depression, chemical dependency, or even suicide. This module has discussed the fact that although it is impossible to change the stress that comes with the anesthesia profession or the inherent personalities that individuals bring, it is possible to improve the knowledge that students, educators, and anesthesia providers have on how to better arm themselves to cope with the stress, to recognize the vulnerabilities, and control the risk factors. Hopefully this knowledge will help anesthesia students and providers to avoid the pitfalls of destructive behavior through recognizing the importance of wellness and stress management. The AANA has recognized the value of a wellness and chemical dependency curriculum. Finding healthy ways to deal with your stress will help you manage it before it manages you. We hope the content from the Wellness and Chemical Dependency in the Nurse Anesthesia Profession curriculum modules will help each of you care for yourself as well as your patients. When you complete the curriculum, you'll find an increased knowledge of the occupational risk of chemical dependency in anesthesia professionals. The curriculum is designed to encourage you to build the ability to cope with stressors and to recognize the signs and behavior of an impaired colleague as well as resources to find the available peer assistance when needed. The AANA provides supportive and supplementary information to this curriculum online. Go to www.aanawellness.com and follow the link for wellness education and research.